What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, it's your homie, Futuristic Mike. Welcome back to another review. Now, this is going to be a review on Alice in Borderlands Season 2. Yes, we finally got Season 2, man. After two years, it's been a long wait. Season 1 was so good, in my opinion. I didn't watch the show when it first came out. I was sleeping on this show, man. This is such a phenomenal show. Man, the Japanese, they really make some great shows, in my opinion. Man, Squid Game was good as well. But honestly, this might be a little better than Squid Game. I don't know. What do you guys think about that? But in the first season, we didn't really know what was going on. They didn't explain much, really. We just know that, you know, Erasu, Karabe, and Chote, they all got transported to this, like, alternative universe. This different place. It looks like their world, but it's definitely not their world, man. They start playing these games, and all these games are life or death games. And it's like each game that they play is either a spades game, club, hearts, or diamonds. And the kind of symbol on the card for the game is the difficulty of the game. So we see Erasu, you know, getting through these games with his friends and stuff. It's unfortunate that his friends had to die in episode 3 of season 1. All of his friends, you know, he was left alone and stuff. But then he meets this girl named Usagi, and he's with her a lot in season two man they get separated some of the time and stuff but then they end up finding each other again and i love these two there is definitely something between the two there was a connection they even kissed at one part which i enjoyed there was a lot of people you know from the end of season one or at least the second half of season one that showed up in season two and i love to see that you know we had queena who showed up a goonie he ended up showing up in season two Naragi, Tata, all kinds of people, you know, from season one showed up in season two. And I really appreciated that. We've seen some really great characters come back. I enjoyed the hotel part of season one. Like the second half of season one was them in that hotel called the beach or whatever. It was a lot of season one, to be honest. A lot of season one took place in that hotel. In season two, you know, the characters keep moving a little more than they did in season one. We see them going from place to place, playing all different kinds of games and stuff. They get separated and end up finding each other again. We see the characters alone a lot of the time because they get split up. One of the kings, I forgot which it was. I don't remember if it was like the king of hearts, diamonds or what. I don't remember. But at the beginning, he's going after everybody man shooting them with the machine gun and stuff just going crazy unloading on anybody in the street so they have to try to get away from this king and later on they end up killing this king i think in like episode seven with the help of a goonie and some others and stuff they ended up finally killing this man and everybody got really hurt in the process i mean everybody you know queena got stabbed up Usagi, she got messed up. Just everybody that was there trying to fight against this king, they got messed up. And I honestly thought all of them were dead. But in the season finale, you know, we found out that they were still alive. They were just badly hurt. And Erasu, you know, he sprayed all kinds of shit inside the building. And then he blew the place up, which really blew the king up. And then a goonie, he took the kill shot. But a goonie got really messed up too, man. I thought he was done for sure. But then he came back fighting and swinging and stuff. And I'm like, damn, yes, sir. That's what I'm talking about. Because I love a goonie. I love a lot of characters in the show. My favorite characters, I'll say, are Erasu, obviously, Usagi, Queena, and a goonie. But this world is so messed up, man. All the buildings have like mold and moss and stuff on them. And the city just looks a lot crazier than it did in season one. That just goes to show you that they've been there for quite some time. But there's like these blimps and a blimp represents the kings and stuff of the clubs, spades, hearts and diamonds. So every time they beat one of the kings of each card, the blimp kind of catches on fire and it like explodes or whatever and falls to the ground. So they managed to get through all the games and stuff you know beat all the kings or whatever and then they finally get to the last one the queen and the queen is actually mira if you guys remember her from season one she was at the beach she was one of the executives at the beach i guess she was posing at the beach or whatever 
you know, spying in on the players and stuff, she was the queen in the season finale. And she was trying to trick Erisu and Usagi into thinking that this was all an illusion and stuff. She was just telling them stuff to mess with their heads so she could win the game. But Erisu was like giving up, man. He was thinking everything was his fault. He was thinking his friends dying was his fault. He was just ready to give up. And Usagi, you know, she was on the floor next to him and they were just having a beautiful moment. And Mira actually felt that. She's like, damn, that was beautiful. And Erisu got up. He's like, man, I'm going to continue this game and we're going to win. So they continue the game. And the game that they were playing was croquet. It was simple. They just had to, you know, complete three games to win or whatever. And they did. And Mira died. And after they won, they could choose if they wanted to stay in this world or leave. They could accept or decline residency of this country. And for the most part, everybody said, no, I want to go home. There was one person, I think, who said, yes, I'll accept. I'll stay here. But all the main characters had a choice to stay or leave. Of course, they want to leave, man, because they've been looking for answers the entire show. They've been looking for answers as to why they're here in this place. So they wanted to go home this whole time. They finally got their wish. I love to see the end to see that everything was back to normal. You know, Erisu was back with his friends and just everything was all happy and stuff. And then out of nowhere, a meteorite comes down and the meteorite explodes and it destroys some of the city. And it turns out Erisu's friends, they ended up dying in the meteorite. And it seems like everybody who was in that other world, I'm talking about, you know, Erisu, Usagi, and all the main characters and stuff. It turns out they were badly hurt in the meteorite explosion. And they're all in the hospital recovering and stuff. And it was nice to see them reunite with their families and stuff, you know, for them to actually be back in this real world and not have to deal with those life or death games anymore what really sucks to me is the fact that they didn't know each other anymore like they had no idea who each other was they have no recollection of anything that went down or happened like their memory was completely erased i still don't have all the answers i'm still not 100 percent sure what that other world even was I don't even know to be honest if you guys know comment your thoughts down below like what was it because they never really actually explained we have a moment where erisu and usagi come up to each other you know by the vending machine and stuff and they're talking and stuff and erisu starts flirting with usagi because he feels like he's met her some point in his life and she got the same feeling after a while so they you know start walking and he was flirting with her and stuff but it made me mad that they didn't know each other but at least they can get to know each other now you know and maybe fall in love or whatever we seen queena reunite with her mom and her dad and it was just a very good moment at the end you know seeing them all back in the real world seeing them all with their families and stuff it was just a good ending in my opinion but then we get this joker card at the end it zooms in on this joker card so i have no idea what that means does that indicate a season three is on the way I don't know because season two was kind of a conclusion to the story in my opinion they could have ended it you know with season two but i hope they don't i really hope they don't this show is so good i hope they go on with another season because i definitely want to see more man i mean they're back in this world now if they make a season three what would happen you know how would they go back to the game world and stuff what would have to happen, you know, to transport them back to that game world? And all the kings are dead and stuff. They beat all the game masters and stuff. So what would happen if they go back to that world? Will there be new game masters, new kings and stuff? Like, I'm really curious to know what's going to happen next if we do get a season three. You know, it hasn't been greenlit yet, but I hope we get it. I seriously thoroughly enjoyed season two, man. It was very good. I enjoyed the games a lot. I really liked the games in season one, but they did a great job with the games in season two, man. I loved it, man. The stakes were high. It was real live life or death situations. There were some games where like only one person could make it out. So it was just fun to watch. But if you guys have seen Alice in Borderlands season two, comment your thoughts down below. Let me know your favorite moments of season two. Comment all your thoughts down below. And what are your theories, thoughts, predictions, and everything else for a potential season three? Let me know. Keep supporting your boy, and I'll be continuing to bring y'all Alice and Borderland content in the future. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe, and smash that notification bell so you can never miss a video. If you guys want to donate to the channel, I got links below to the PayPal and Cash App accounts. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. 
Let me get out of here, y'all. It's your boy, Futuristic Mike, and I'll talk to you on the next one. I'm out. Peace.